So hello and welcome to another class of ABM for Sciences. This is Abhishek with you. So today we'll be talking about single stranded DNA virus replication method, and that is the molecular mechanism of DNA virus replication, single stranded DNA virus replication. So as I promised in my earlier classes, and that I'll be going in detail in single stranded DNA, double stranded DNA, single stranded RNA, and double stranded RNA uh, viruses. So here I am with my classes. Now, first of all. You have to understand few things between single strand DNA virus replication, and it will be easier for you. So, I am taking here 5x174 and N13 bacteriophage, which is also a virus that infect E. coli. Okay, so N13 and you can say 5x174, these are the two bacteriophages or viruses which attacks E. coli. Now, these two viruses are extensively studied for viral replication or any other study that's why I've chosen these two viruses. Now, few things you have to understand about the primary causes or primary replication mechanism. First one is formation of Replicative forms. <clears throat> okay, so first one is replicative forms. Second one is multiplication of or uh, you can just give a short form for future use, which will be easier. Or if and third one is packaging of the virus particle. So these are the three basic steps of single standard DNA virus replication. Now coming to replicative forms, what are replicative forms? As we know that this virus contains, suppose this one is a single stranded SS DNA. Now, replicative form where a copy of this single stranded DNA virus will be made and will sustain as a double stranded DNA at the particular replication process. And after the replication process is over, each and every brilliant particle will contain single stranded virus as the parent genome. So I will be showing you my pictures, it will be easier for you. So, so this is a suppose positive single stranded DNA. Okay. Now this positive single stranded DNA will be taken as a template to form a negative strand okay so this is the negative strand which will be forming okay now i have a marking here this small stretch as red as it is the primer that is RNA primer through which the another strand will be synthesized complementary to the positive single stranded DNA which I have taken here as a positive single stranded DNA and this blue color is negative single stranded DNA okay so this form which you are seeing now is called RF replicative form. Now, this negative single stranded DNA will be taken as a Xerox copy or not Xerox copy, it is a complementary copy as of the DNA. So, it will be taken as the copy which will be copied to positive single stranded DNA that is the original viral genome. Okay. So from here, 
if this is the negative copy negative copy so like this several copies will be made from this copy of positive single stranded dna so this negative single stranded dna is serving the purpose of replicating the genome of the virus to several copies this form is called replicative form now i'm going to the formation of replicative forms how it forms the mechanism so the mechanism of forming the replicative form now i'll draw the picture so it will be easier for you this is the red one i am showing here is the rna primer which will be used for synthesis of this strand that is the negative strand now this primer there can be three methods through which this second strand this negative strand can be synthesized okay so what are the three process first one is rna polymerase so rna polymerase can synthesize this red portion which i marked here there is a rna primer from which the dna strand will be synthesized the minus dna strand single strand dna will be synthesized this is the first second what it can be that is primase the primase can serve as the rna primer through which the negative strand dna will be synthesized and third one is primosome complex so this is the complex uh, formed by dna strand and the protein interacted with each other in close proximity about uh, seven to eight several components of proteins will bound at a particular region of the dna and there it will serve the purpose of synthesizing dna from the rna primer so these three methods either of these three methods can be applied here to form or initiate the negative strand dna synthesis so let's move forward so after the synthesis of this negative strand uh, dna that rna will be removed by dna polymerase okay so dna pol 1 will be removing this rna and the gap made by this dna pol 1 will be sealed by dna ligase okay so now your replicative form with the minus single stranded dna and the positive single stranded dna is ready so this replicative form then will be converted into listen carefully will be converted into super helical or super coiled form by That's a very poor picture I'm drawing here. I'll correct it. That DNA will be converted. Replicated form will be converted into super coiled form. Okay, the super coiled form is highly necessary. for further replication of the positive strand single stranded dna from this replicative form that's why the super coiled form is very very important which is done by dna kinase
which is a topoisomer as we know that. Now the first step we have covered it. Now coming to the next step that is multiplication of replicative form for more copies of the positive single standard DNA. So how it happens? What are the protein which is involved there for this process? So multiplication. Again, I am drawing the same picture here. This is our replicative form with positive stand single standard DNA and negative stand single standard DNA. Now, our genome or the genome or the strand of interest is the positive single standard DNA. Okay, so what's happening here is there will be a nick generated at the positive single standard DNA. Suppose it's here, so a nick is generated. Okay, so there will be two ends that is 3 prime hydroxyl and 5 prime phosphate ends created through this nick. And that nick, where the nick is present, there will be a protein called GPA. So, GPA protein, suppose I am making it visually for you guys. This red portion, suppose, is a GPA protein which will bind the 5' prime phosphate of the nick created by the enzyme. So, 5' prime phosphate is bound by the GPA anchor, and the 3' prime hydroxyl is serving as the purpose for elongation of the DNA. Okay, so now the positive single stranded DNA is elongating. With the help of another enzyme, DNA all three, and the unwinding between these two strands will be done by helicases. The host helicases will be used here for unwinding purpose. GPA will bind the five prime phosphate region. And the DNA pol 3 will be synthesizing the or elongation of the positive single stranded DNA. So, if we draw the next step of this process, what will be there? What will be there? So, this negative strand is serving the purpose of copying this positive strand, and here. That is GPA protein. Suppose I'm just elongating this one. Suppose it is elongated from where it is started. That is the you can mark it as uh, you can mark this region as origin of replication. So you have seen that this much of single stranded DNA is already processed. Now, when it is synthesized, synthesized, and it reaches the, again the origin, the original sequence from where it nicked, again there will be a nick created. Okay. Now, second nick creation or the cleavage in that strand again create a five prime phosphate and three prime hydroxyl group, and the GPA anchor will be transferred from the new strand to the old strand. Oh, sorry, to the old strand to the new strand. And again, it will serve the three prime hydroxyl will serve as the uh, primer for synthesis or elongation of the process, and the five prime GPA anchor will hold the process, and helicase uh, will unwind the thing, and DNA polymerase three will be preparing the, uh, the single standard DNA positive single standard DNA. So this process repeats again and again. Now, why the supercoil form is necessary? Because when the supercoil form uh, is there the protein that is GPA, GPA needs to be in that in form to bind first. So the second cleavage does not require the supercoiled form. The first cleavage requires the supercoiled form 
for binding of the GPA protein. Now how coming to the last step that is the packaging coming to the last step we know how the fudge understand that this is enough and we should go for packaging now. So there are few markers I'll be telling you here GP5 is a fudge protein class of filamentous fudges when it accumulates inside the host then the negative strand synthesis the is stopped so no more negative strand synthesis and the positive strand will be uh, formed will be packed with the capsid proteins and then lysis will form so this protein is very much essential to signify that the host is ready to lyse or the packaging should be started so now the uh, different or several copies of positive single stranded DNAs will serve as mRNA formation and then the protein or packaging proteins so one negative single stranded DNA which is serving the purpose of creating more and more copies of single stranded DNA genome for the virus again that single uh, stranded DNA genome can also serve the purpose of uh, going for uh, mRNA that is transcription and then again translation to the different required proteins which help them to package themselves within single stranded DNA and lies the host. So this is the basic mechanism of single stranded DNA virus replications. So I hope you like this class. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comment section and hit the like button if you like my classes and don't forget to subscribe thank you